California and New York have adopted ingredient disclosure laws. Sometimes it takes superheroes to adopt new laws. And I think we can all agree that this trend on ingredient communication is beneficial for society. In our studio to explore these initiatives and their impact are Sherry Kudrowski of 3M and Steve Bennett of the Household Commercial Product Association. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, can you explain in a nutshell um, these state initiatives? California, they've long been a leader on the variety of right to know laws. I think you know the most obvious is the long-standing Proposition 65, which concentrated on hazardous uh, toxicants, whether of the carcinogens or reproductive toxins. But the recent, due to uh, consumer pressure and drive towards more greater and greater degree of transparency, a better understanding towards ingredients and products. Um, there's been a move towards focusing on there and in 2017 they passed what's called the California Cleaning Products Right to Know Act uh, which really expanded that portfolio taking from just simply intentional broadening it to the full and potentially added ingredients within formulations as well as even the trace contaminants and unintentional ingredients. Uh, at it's about the same time, New York State went forward with an initiative of their own under their existing authority to adopt a number of regulations, adopting similar but in some cases significantly different uh, regulations with respect to ingredient disclosure in New York State. Um, so that's probably the nutshell. Um, you know, there's certainly been a lot of interest in that and in trying to make sure that the two of those are as lined as much as possible. Sherry, what was the initial response from industry on these initiatives? Industry was really supportive of these initiatives. Industry supports the idea that consumers should have access to information to allow them to make informed purchasing decisions. And in fact, industry was well prepared for this through HCPA, which has been a real leader in the space of ingredient communication. They have, industry has voluntarily been disclosing their ingredients to consumers for at least a decade. And HCPA specifically introduced a voluntary disclosure model or program for its members. Several members adopted it going back over a decade now. I recall that in California, Senator Joe Simidian over the course of several years was introducing cleaning product right to know type legislation. So this concept has been around for a long time and HCP and its member companies were in dialogue with Simidian and several other stakeholders about what this should look like, protecting confidential business information and other industry inter interests as well as getting consumers the information they need. We also had the foresight as an industry, and especially again through HCPA's leadership, to provide an ingredient dictionary. And the ingredient dictionary is intended to deal with all the complexity of nomenclature of chemicals. I think we're all familiar with IUPAC, CAS, uh, inky names, common names. And so the idea behind the dictionary was to standardize how chemicals get named so that no matter whose company's label you're looking at, the consumer would see the ingredient named the same way. And even in the California statute, the uh, ingredients have to be named according to a hierarchy and the ingredient dictionary is at the top of that hierarchy. Steve, the, the initiative said they aim to, uh, in the end, to deselect certain chemicals or that the products are reformulated. Um, is this achieved? You know, I think when I think of a chemical, I think it's a, a chemical itself is agnostic, but it, how it's used is the critical piece. And if, if you have a use of a particular chemical that has a risk associated, want to make sure that you have proper, how, properly how to use that ingredient, how to safely use it, safely dispose it, et cetera, and, and potentially protect your consumers and give them the right information. You know, that's a critical point of read the label. Make sure that your consumers, your users of your products read the label or the SDS sheet so they have the right information and know how to use that. Um, and recognize you know, if, there, if there is a deselection of a chemical, there can be a variety of drivers. It might be identified risk associated, it may be a perceived risk or a concern, identification. Um, a part of our role as an association is giving much information out to our members and companies make sure that they can make the appropriate decision, whatever that decision may be, as far out as possible. Uh, another role that the dictionary, the HCPA dictionary also serves is you can look in there, you can look in ingredients and you can identify similar ingredients that might serve a similar role in your product formulations that would assist and facilitate your research and development process. Which, but and I think the other piece that you know, even within the California statute, one of the pieces that we pushed very hard for from an industry perspective was there was a component of Proposition 65 chemicals were also listed and they have additional time wrapped into the regulation 
for the disclosure requirement to give to allow the companies that would choose to reformulate additional time so they can make those appropriate decisions and make sure that their new formulation doesn't have un unexpected or unintended consequences. Sherry, what are the challenges for companies in the uh, communication on the ingredients in their products? So one of the main challenges for industry is protecting their confidential business information, their, their legitimate intellectual property. Companies invest a significant amount of resources into research and development, which benefits the consumer. It results in more efficacious products, it results in novel products, it results in greener products, which are all of benefit to the consumer. And companies are very rational about their research and development investments. They want to make sure that they get a return on that investment, and, and in order to do that, they need to protect their intellectual property. So there needs to be a balance between transparency and getting information to the consumer, but at the same time protecting that research and development investment. The other big challenge, I think, is harmonization. Steve spoke about that earlier. And harmonization is essential because the companies that are selling these household and cleaning type products, commercial products, are selling them nationwide. Their websites are nationwide. And one thing it's imp I think it's important to realize is that the reach of the California law goes well beyond California. Again, the products are sold nationwide, the websites are accessible nationwide, and I, I think there's in many ways sort of a limited return on investment in any additional state that were to promulgate regulations. And can you provide some successful examples of uh, ingredient communication uh, due to these state initiatives? Sure, I, they're a little non-specific, but what we're seeing is that when a consumer wants to make a decision between two products, so company A's product in a certain space and company B's product, they can go to the websites of both companies and they're really going to find similar information. It's going to be presented in a similar format, it's going to use the same nomenclature, which benefits the consumer. I think another example is there's a win-win for both the consumer and companies because 3M and, and other members of industry routinely get questions from consumers about products. And this way we can point them to the websites and over time they learn to go right to the website. So that's faster information for the consumer, less time for the companies and answering case by case questions, just redirecting them to the site. And I think there's also benefits to having that information up there accessible because if, if there's not a uniform information that's up there accessible to consumers, they're going to find out on the internet anyway, and that may not be the most the accurate information that's out there. Are these state initiatives, the initial wave of chemical reforms that will forever change uh, chemical regulations at state and federal level? Or so, in other words, can we expect a domino effect? We have seen other states introduce legislation around ingredient communication, but it tends to be really product specific in, in certain categories, so for, for example, hygiene products or cosmetics. We've also seen several bills shopped at a national level, nothing that's really gained a whole lot of momentum. And then if we look internationally, Korea, for example, is a community or a government that has a lot of interest in ingredient communication and the Ministry of Environment there has, has reached out to manufacturers and retailers to have them do a voluntary ingredient communication program. I think a lot of the activity in this space though is really not legislative or regulatory, it's at the retailer level. We're seeing a lot of retailers come forward with their own transparency programs and, and that's maybe where the domino effect has been most felt is once one retailer did it, a bunch of other retailers got on board as well. Thank you very much for disclosing some parts of the initiatives in California and New York and providing successful examples on ingredient communication. Let's follow the example. It's child's play.